Hey, defensive pistol practitioners. Um, been a long time since I've made a video. Um, and actually, I am just now coming off about an eight month complete and total hiatus off season um, since last February. Um, I ended up shooting about eight or 10,000 rounds in four months training up for a big event. And that's not really sustainable for me. So I took a little break. And then, uh, you know, the summertime hit and I got busy at work and I, I just ended up taking kind of a big off season. But fall's here now and, you know, that means competition season, training season, time for, for fun and uh, time to start getting trained back up. So when I had a long break uh, and I'm just getting, I've been started back about two and a half weeks now. And I noticed that, you know, it's pretty easy to build in new bad habits or not not pay attention to techniques that were really benefiting you, you know, when, when you were last shooting a lot. So I kind of have to think about it and make sure I'm not messing myself up. And so over the last two weeks, I've kind of started to focus on like, like three or four specific things. And, uh, so I thought, man, that would be, if it's benefiting me right now, and if it's going to shorten my spin up time to get back at it, uh, it'd probably be a good video to make. So I went and grabbed my tripod. And so here we go. Uh, these are very random. They're not all about one thing. They're just kind of random things I'm working on. So the first one is on the draw. I mean, I don't know any defensive or practical pistol shooter that doesn't want a faster draw and is always working on it. Um, so one thing for me that was kind of revolutionary in, in the last few years, really, in helping me with my draw is stabbing the gun out of the holster. So... There's a, and I, and I need to offset this by saying I've been to so much training and so many classes and then talked to so many people and everybody has their different take on this. I mean, there's a, a really, really fast guy on the scene right now uh, and he advocates for a scoop draw. And I mean, I've tried to scoop draw and it, I mean, for my body type and the way I grip the gun and stuff like that, it just doesn't work at all uh, for me. But if it works for you, that's awesome. Uh, another, other, a lot of my other instructors will just say, you have to just go faster. You have to explode into motion. Well, when I tried to explode into motion, I inadvertently build tension, you know, like I bring my shoulders up too hard and I build frenetic motion and it's, it's actually counterproductive. And I know that's a, that's a me problem. And, you know, I'm sure that people that have a, like an extremely athletic background, uh, where they can generate speed without building that much tension, um, you know, that would be a gift. I mean, if you're like that, it's a gift because not everybody's like that. But for me, I, I have to do a couple of things. One, I, I just have to do lots and lots of reps and get the, get the technique in my, in my muscle memory or in my myelinization, whatever you want to call it. But then this other technique, I'm about to talk about stabbing the gun out of the holster, is kind of like the counter technique to every all the bad things I just mentioned, uh, and, and in a couple of different ways, which I'll share. So uh, when we talk about stabbing the gun of the holster, what it means is whenever you go to draw, you're gonna come down on that gun so hard, like maximum force down on the gun, and for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So when I come down hard, and I'm building tension in my belt and my belt line, it's gonna come back up and it kind of pops or throws the gun up to you. And with practice, I'm telling you what, man, this works so good um, um, to build a faster draw. And so number one, like, I have to slow the gun down a lot of times coming out whenever I get really good at this because I'll over travel the target, in, you know, vertically. Um, number two, uh, the second thing about this is, you know, whenever you're on the line and you're shooting for a challenge coin or you're about to shoot a match and the RL's got you, it, let's say you're nervous, maybe a little nervous because your buddies are watching. Um, you know, most instruct really high end instructors would tell you that in the when you start the action phase, you need to be void of thought. You, you shouldn't have any conscious thoughts in your head. And I agree with that 100%. Uh, you know, that goes way back to Sun Tzu and Imperial Japan and Samurais and be 
be of no mind, you know, be, be void of thought, um, to let your subconscious skill come out because conscious thoughts can crush subconscious skill that's been trained. And that's true. The problem is if you're like me and you have an uncalm mind, <laughs> that's very difficult to do. And you know, I struggled with it for years. It's pretty hard to empty my mind of everything and be in a meditative state when I'm about to begin the action phase. And I don't know why that's, that is, but that is just, you know, I, I know that about me. So the second thing I noticed though, is if I'm gonna have a conscious thought at the beginning of the action phase, if I'm in the box or ready to start, it's really helpful if I can control that conscious thought, what that conscious thought's gonna be. So if I have a conscious thought of go real fast here, I mean, I'm already building tension. But what I found through training is if, if I think stab the gun into the holster, okay. I am able to come down hard on the gun and let it hand the gun up to me and I don't have any tension at all and I'm able to do it really fast, uh, which is very unique for me. That's very helpful. <laughs> so when I get this thing spun up and, you know, and I'm doing really good, it's worth two tenths on a draw. So, uh, and it's such a benefit whenever you come down hard on the gun and the belt line and the holster, uh, you know, all the energy coming back out of the holster is doing all the work. I'm not manhandling the gun up and trying to pull the gun up hard with my muscles. It's already coming up based on how hard I came down and hit it in, you know, in the first part of the draw. But then once I have the gun, it's out. So. I'll uh, try to do one more good one here. Okay, so you notice, you may have noticed a grimace on my face there too. Believe it or not, uh, I've never done that before. And one day I started doing it and I noticed that my draws were better. And whatever energy or thought or whatever process in my mind is going through to grimace in my face is being deducted from frenetic motion in my body and I had like one of the best shooting nights I've had uh, whenever I was actually grimacing in my face it's, it's, it seems weird and I don't even believe it myself so if, if you want to rebut that uh, <laughs> you'll get no argument but I noticed when I normally don't you know I'm just kind of void and, and one night I was, uh, you know, I was really going hard. And if I allowed myself to have a little bit of grimace in my face, it seemed like it was, it was taking the edge off what was going on down here. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But stabbing the gun out of the holster and allowing the energy in your, in your belt and the reaction from stabbing down, you know, helped get the gun up, now I'm not manhandling or pushing or using muscular energy to get the gun out. Unbelievable. Um, the second tip is a Bob Vogel thing. So when people talk about Bob Vogel, you're going to be talking about grip, right? So, I mean, that guy, um, so Bob Vogel, he has a grip where he is so high on the gun and I can't, I've tried the, the Bob Vogel grip. I don't have enough flexibility in my wrists to actually mimic how high he gets on the slide and stuff like that. And also he goes way out on the trigger guard and he kind of hooks his index finger around the trigger guard. Well, the one thing about him hooking his index finger is he also, if you ever go to one of his classes, he teaches about torquing in with like literally torquing in. So even though I don't go out on the trigger guard, I'm kind of like right everything on the grip. I, I, I trained torquing in as hard as I could for a long time and it really makes an impact. My vertical stringing started coming way down. Um, now the only thing I would get worried about is when I'm torquing in, I'm torquing against something else on the front, right? So I'm really feeling it on my pinky in my non-dominant hand, you know, like, like it's trying to peel away. So a couple of things that help that, number one, if you use a grip enhancer like Petzl or rosin powder or 
you know, whatever, you know, some kind of climber's chalk or liquid chalk or whatever. It's all good stuff. Um, but that really, that really inhibits, like if you're torquing in hard to get your chicken bones high in, on that gun and getting a lot of grip close to the bore axis, uh, it helps keep your fingers together like on a high speed drill, like a build drill. Um, and then the second thing for me is, even though I was worried that it was gonna separate my fingers up front or that I was gonna upset the sights by putting that much tension in two different opposing forces, with time, I did get better at it and I was applying a lot more torque up high and it, you know, it had a positive impact on the target. So I think it's worth messing around with um, if, you, if you're not already kind of focusing on that. But to adopt the technique, you've really got to think about it like, uh, uh, like, you know, like write yourself a note on your target when you're training to remember to, to do it because it's, it's kind of hard to adopt it if you're not used to doing it. Um, third one is on reloads. So most of the, my shooting career, you know, we hear so many times from different instructors, do it sooner, do it sooner. Well, on a reload, as soon as you fire your last shot, you're dumping the mag and it's normally way out here. Um, like boom, and then you drop it and then you pull it into your workspace. And a second point to that is a lot of instructors will tell you to make a red mark or a white mark in your mag well to look at when you're doing that. So that, you know, you, you're shooting, you come off, you look at that, and then you uh, do that with you know and you can train that with a burkett or different kind of reload style um, I did that for years and uh, you know 50% of the time I was good but 50% of the time I came up with that and it, so what I would say it was very inconsistent very unreliable I would fumble a reload all the time and I couldn't figure out why I just couldn't get my mind to train that well I gotta give credit again where credit is due. Um, the first tip of stabbing the gun that holster came from Modern Samurai Project. That's Jedi and AJ Zito. If you'll get, you'll, you'll have AJ as your assistant instructor if you are in the Southwest normally. Uh, so uh, you know AJ and and Jedi are the ones that really taught me to stab the gun in the holster. An honorable mention there, uh, I also went to Fabio Spinella at My Own Defender, who is kind of from MSP lineage. You know, he's an affiliate instructor. He also has his own curriculum, but I remember when I went to Fabio's class, I mean, I don't know if he teaches it, but he just does it. Like, he's coming down on the gun and also on his mag so hard that you really notice it. And then when you saw, well, that was like a .79, I, I need to practice that again. That's kind of where I re got really interested in the stab was not just from MSP, but also seeing Fabio do it in his, in his daily demos. Um, the second tip was from Bob Vogel. Uh, this, this last reload tip is also from Modern Samurai. And what's interesting is that uh, Jedi doesn't teach reloads at all in his class. Um, but he saw me, you know, fumble the reload one day uh, by pulling it back in. I didn't do it right by dropping it out here and then like looking at my paint mark and coming up with this and he's like hey man come here you know try this and here's what he showed me um, and it works so much better uh, so let's do a reload instead of dropping it way out there when you come off your last shot wait get it back in your workspace wait Get it back in your workspace. So you wait, and then um, you, there's just something about your mind watching that old mag drop out in that exact place. And whenever you go for your reload, it normally just goes right back in the same exact spot, doesn't even touch the sides. It's, I mean, it's just like a magic trick to me. Um, so let's try one here. I missed the uh, mag release. This is a new gun. It's got a really tight recoil spring in it. Let's try it again. It's just, there's just something magical about it. 
and what I'm, it, it, it leads to better consistency. Whenever I start training that, um, again, waiting, getting the gun back into my workspace, dropping it here, and then sticking it, I mean, it's just amazing how much, how much better it works. So stab it out, and then on your reload, wait, get it back here. And by me watching it, another side benefit of that is I noticed that my time with my eyes off target is lessened because I'm on target until I get it back here and then bam, it's in and then I'm back out on target. Whereas when you drop the mag out here, you're already trying to sync up with where you're gonna look and you still miss the reload. So again, watch that old mag fall out and your, your new mag goes perfectly back in where the last one just came out. So try those tips, let me know if they help. Catch you later.